Hello and welcome to our Apple Pages class. My name is James Hill, an instructor for Learn It and a Mac user for over 30 years and an Apple evangelist of sorts since the very first iPhone came out 15 years ago. I'm really excited to help you navigate the Apple ecosystem with Learn It training. Now, you might think with a simple name like Pages that this is just a simple little program. Well, at one time it may have been, but today's Pages is as robust of a word processing document creation software as you could hope for. Now, if you're a Microsoft Word user, I think you're going to love Love how great this program is. If you have used Pages before, this training should help you speed up your creation process and you may even learn some new functions along the way. Now, what are we going to learn about in this class? Well, we'll start with the basics, layouts, opening and closing, saving, printing, all that stuff, and then we'll wade a little deeper into text boxes and graphics, formatting our text and documents, we'll add some charts and tables to a document, and we'll wrap things up with ways you can collaborate and publish your document, whether it's a poster, a brochure, a book, or even an ebook. And by the way, many of these functions translate to the iPad version of Pages as well, so when you're finished with this training, you'll be a power user on the iPad version too. If you're enjoying these videos, please be sure to like and subscribe, and if you're looking to earn certificates and watch videos without ads, please take a moment and sign up for Learn It Anytime, our dedicated online training and subscription services. Now check the link in the description for more information. As we go through this training, if you have a question that we don't cover that you would like answered by one of our instructors, please join our off-site community. The link for that is also in the description. Oh, and before we get started, this course does have exercise files, and you're going to find a link for them. Yep, you guessed it, right there in the video description below. Now, from time to time, I'll mention that you probably want to pause the video and go ahead and try it yourself, so be sure to do that. But remember, if you get to a part that you want to try and I don't mention that, go ahead and pause the video anyway. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be right here waiting patiently for you to resume the video. Also, if you're old enough to remember video rental stores like Blockbuster, their motto was, be kind, rewind. You can do that too. If you miss a section, back it up and I'll say it again. Now, my hope is that you're watching this on your Mac already, so let's get ready to go. All right, so let's start with the simplest task, opening pages. Now, if you're new to a Mac, the best place to find it is with the launch pad. That's this little icon right here that looks like a bunch of sticky notes on another background. We'll click that and then look for the pages icon. It's right here. Looks like a little white ink pen with an orange background. Now, Click that and Pages is ready to open. Now, if you're like me and you use this program a lot, <laughs> and I mean a lot, you might want to do this trick. Go down to your taskbar and right click on Pages and then under Options, click Keep in Dock. And there it moves it right over with the programs that you use the most. You can even drag it over into place with these others. We're not going to do that right now, but you get the idea. So, by the way, with a name like Pages, it might sometimes be confusing when I talk about this software or actual portions of your document, which are also called Pages. <laughs> so I'll try to be very clear with the context as we go. Now, when you open Pages, you should see a welcome screen, a little bit like this one, but you also might see something that looks a little bit like this. There we go. Now we have some templates available. Everything that's basic, blank stuff, reports, book templates, letters, resumes, if you need to polish that one up, yeah, you're going to want to update that once you complete this training to, to add the fact that you know pages now. There's flyers and posters, newsletters, different kinds of stationery here. Envelopes are included in that, also business cards. There's some certificates available here, just a few different miscellaneous things, brochures. Maybe you're looking for an alternative to Adobe InDesign that might be a little easier, or if you remember Microsoft Publisher, doing brochures with those, but at any rate, those last three here, don't let the titles fool you on the stationary section because it is postcards, it is envelopes, it is business cards. You've got a lot of availability here. Certificates, again, you've got an employee of the month you want to honor. Great things there. By the way, don't forget in the miscellaneous, there's an invoice template that you might want to use as well. So what do you need to do today? Let's just take a look at a couple of the basics here first. Let's go back up to basic and choose blank. Now we're going to click create and it creates a brand new open document for us. 
Now, let's deal with a few terms that we're going to use during this training first. First off, at the top of the screen, we'll call this the file menu, where you see file, edit, insert, format, arrange, and so forth. All those are at the very top of your screen. By the way, the word pages here is not just to remind you what program you're using. It's actually part of the file menu as well, but we're going to get to that in a little while. Now, the format area is this over on the right side where it says nothing selected. <laughs> but from here, you can format your text, your graphics, tables, even the entire document like this, right from the format panes on the right side of this, and they open automatically depending on what you have selected. The view area is on the left side of your screen, and here you can select what view you need to work with, and even sections of the document that you might need to edit or create. And we'll actually click view, and we'll do page thumbnails, so you get a view of that. And finally, the top buttons up here, these are obviously things that will be right up here at the top, and many of these buttons have functions that have keyboard shortcuts, which are my favorite, but we're going to have to wait till the end to get to those keyboard shortcuts. Now, notice as you get this blank layout, it's ready for you to start typing. Uh, this is a basic word processing layout. I'm just going to type a little text in there. So. You'll notice the format pane over here on the right, you have options for changing the style of the text that you're working on from body text and headings and subheadings, all of these things, things that a standard word processing document can do. But what if you need a blank slate to work with? Well, that's pretty simple. Let's remove the body of the document, and now you're going to have a blank page to play with. So click the document button over here on the right. That brings up our full document format. And then right here to the middle of that, you'll see a box that says document body. You're going to click that box. And now pop-up's going to come up. Are you sure you want to convert this to a page layout document? You're going to click convert. And now, even though you click in the document like I'm doing right now, you cannot type any text but it is a blank document for your creation pleasure. From here, you can add text boxes, graphics, photos. All of these things will stay right where you put them as well. Now, obviously, in the word processing layout, you can do all those too, but the added items will naturally move with the text. In the blank layout, they stick where you put them. Photos, tables, graphics, charts, all of these things stay right there. It's such a powerful tool for layout. You can use this blank layout section for everything from setting up a short newsletter to getting a book ready to publish. Nice, right? You just have to decide which is right for your particular project. So while we're here, let's look around at inserting some different objects into our document. Now, obviously, we have our blank layout document open, so let's play around with some of the things. Let's start with something simple like a shape or at least you think it's simple. There's so many basic things you can put in there, but as you continue to scroll, you'll see there are objects, animals, nature, food, just different symbols, all kinds of things. There are lots and lots of different graphics that you can add into your document from there. Just a dizzying array of icons, and they're grouped into styles for you, almost one for every occasion, it seems. Now, you also have quick availability for adding charts tables, even text boxes, media with photos, movies, even web videos, music. We're going to get into all of those things later on. You can insert text boxes in here just like this, and you can even add those text boxes into a layout with a document body, but we're going to go in depth on that a little bit later, so don't get bogged down here. I just wanted to take a second and show you just what is available for you to insert into a new document. Now, as we talked about earlier, you have many options for what you can begin with. Let's go a little bit deeper into what you can create. Just select File and New, and the New Document dialog pops up. Now, as we mentioned, you have different basic things here in this area. And of course, if you're taking a class like this one, note taking is a great place to start. Although I don't recommend it for this one on your first round, but the next division is still good for students or even people who are generating business reports. You can really dress things up all the way around, whether it's a school essay or an academic report or even some professional monthly reports, even project proposals here. Now, when you scroll down to the next division, you'll see some fantastic book templates that Memories of a Traveler looks like something I'd like to read. Notice how they're making it easy to decide just which you need. By the way, the text above each selection mentions how your text will reflow when you're publishing an ebook. 
Notice that. And so this is very beneficial for that purpose. The top section is better for text heavy books, while the bottom section is better for picture books or coffee table books or even multi column books. Now, of course, if you need a jump start for letters, you've got a whole section of those. If you need to polish up that resume, there's a whole section of resume templates here as well. I wouldn't let the boss catch you doing that one on company time, though. There are also some flyer and poster templates, which are great. Maybe someone lost their dog or you're trying to sell that scooter. Hey, not a bad deal there. Then there are the newsletters. Now, I know postal mail is kind of slowing down and going the way of the dodo, but some people still appreciate a paper newsletter. Pages also allows you to export these directly to PDF, so you can send them out in your email as well. Now, there are some card options and envelopes, which are essential in business, obviously, as well as some certificate and brochure options as well. Uh, we're going to begin creating some documents here in just a few minutes. Now, what if you need to locate a document that you already created? <laughs> Easy as cake. Not only can you locate a document by the title, but you can search for words in the document as well, just like this. All right, we're going to click on File and then open, brings up our standard dialog box, but look over here in the search window. Let's look up the word newsletter. Now, we can have it check all the files with the name newsletter, but what happens if we click the plus sign right here? That's gonna open up and give us some more options. We can have it search by types of documents, or we can look for contents that contain newsletter, Let's expand it to search the whole Mac and look right there. There's one of our documents in the pages training folder. How about that? Great way to find what you need even on the Mac. By the way, if you take time to tag your documents with the color coding system and the Mac file system, you can sort them that way as well. But this text search is a great way to locate just what you are looking for. Now, opening a document is simple, of course, file, open. We already have done that part. So you can do that also from the finder like this. Let's say you have a document that's been emailed to you and you want to open that up in pages. So we're going to flip over and there we go. We have an email document here. Let's double click that and surprise it opens up in pages just like that. Easy, breezy, beautiful. Now we get, you get ready to close a document. You can click the red dot in the upper left corner or click file and close, or Command W on your keyboard, all of those work to close your document. And once you have named your document, it won't even prompt you to save it. That part is done for you automatically in the background. But what if you have a document that hasn't been saved yet? Well, Pages won't let you down here either. You see this document? We've got it set up here. I haven't done any changes to it, but it hasn't been saved yet. Notice what happens when we try to close it. I'll use keyboard shortcut command W and it asks if we want to save the document and name it. Now, since it's a blank document, we're not going to worry about that. If you want to save your documents while you're working on them, there's an even easier way to do that. Just click right up here in the title bar and name the document. And it's got a place to save it. And now your changes will be saved as you are editing. You're in the groove. You don't want to stop working on your document. You just name it. So all your changes are saved on the go. Simple as that. Okay, take a few minutes and get familiar with the interface. Try creating a document or two, saving and opening. Just pause the video, go exploring, and I'll be here when you get back. Hey, you're back. Okay, let's dive in and get some other work done. Now, a lot of the documents that you create here are going to be printed at some point, so you're going to need to make sure what size paper you want to work with. Now, you have a lot of control over all the aspects of your document. Let's take a look. A simple way to see what some of that you have available is, is to go create a new document. And let's go down to flyers and posters so we can see what we have. See, most of the flyers and even the small posters are going to be an eight and a half by 11, but the big posters, are going to be tabloid size, which is 11 by 17. Now let's click on the event poster big here. And as we create that, you see that document is 11 by 17. Now, what if we decide to go with a different size document? Well, if you need to do something smaller, you've got a lot of flexibility. The printer that I use can print all of these size documents, but 
one thing to keep in mind is that pages is not going to automatically shrink for you. For instance, if we go to a half sheet document here, all that you see is what's up at the top. So what you'll need to do is be sure to shrink all of your things down to the approximate page size you need if you need to resize your page. Now, for the rest of our training, we're going to work with a standard letter size document. So don't worry about this. We'll continue on from there. Okay, let's get a clean slate ready to work with. I'm going to close our example here and delete. We're not going to save that and not worry about it there. So, got a new blank document open and we've got everything stretched out. Now let's get this to zoom to see an entire page. See, we've got the zoom window here. We want one page and fit page. Now we can see the entire document in our window. Now, most modern office printers can work with a one quarter inch margin all the way around. Of course, you'll have to adjust this to your own specifications, but we're going to use uh, 0.25 inches as our example here. And then doing this is pretty easy. You just select document in the format pane, and then you'll notice you have your document margins. We're going to take these margins down to 0.25 all the way around. Very simple to do, right? Now, voila, we have a full page document. Now, suppose you need a header and footer on this and you want them above and below your text. So let's make that adjustment. We're going to bring that up to 0.5. We're going to take the footer to 0.5. There we go. That's in the document body. Now, we could bring those up to 0.25 to fit them above and below all of our stuff. There we go. Now, wait a minute. We can't see those. So in the file menu, you can click view and then show layout. And now suddenly you can see all of your margins and your header and footer as they sit. Now you can see where you're working at. Now the blank layout with no page body is not going to give you document margins like that. Not like the document body or a word processing document will. Here's a pro tip that you may not get anywhere else. You remember how we removed the document body? Now notice that when you do that, the margins you see are only for the header and footer now. That's all that's available. So if you need to see rulers and set up guides to keep you within your print margins, here's how to do that. So with your blank layout selected, we're going to click up here in the file menu and then go up to view and you can show rulers. You can also do that here on view, click show rulers. And now you can see where everything is. Now we can use some guides to keep us in check. We'll drag this one down to 0.25 inches. See how that works. And over here on the left, there are guides as well. You can drag those over and we'll drag another one over here all the way to this side of our document. And then one all the way down to the bottom at 10, let's see, that's going to be 11 inches. So 10.75. We almost can't see that. There we go. All right. Now everything is where it needs to go. Let's get that one nudged down just a little bit. Hey, much better. Now, those guides will keep us in check and each one a quarter inch from the sides. And there we go. Very nice. Now you can see where your document borders are, even in a page layout type document. Now, if you're creating a book, then page flow can be a big deal. Making sure that your layouts work together as you're turning a page can really help. This is helpful if you're creating anything from a technical manual to a recipe book. Yeah, <laughs> ask me how I know about that one. Anyway, viewing your page's document as your reader would is very helpful with your layout. Now would be a great time to open one of the demo documents we have. So let's open the one called Technical Manual 1, and it just happens to be in my recently opened documents. So here we are. A simple, short technical manual. I know it's full of lorem ipsum text, but that's okay. This is going to help us get started on how this works. So now that that's open, how do you do facing pages? Well, it's actually very simple. Make sure you have document on the side over here on the format pane. And then down at the bottom of this, you're going to see facing pages. Click that box and look at how it reformats everything. It auto flows everything so we see how this is going to look for our reader, even on the thumbnail side of this. If you'll double check the zoom level here, you'll notice that it says two pages instead of one page. Makes everything a lot easier to work with to see if your pages are being placed properly. 
Now let's suppose you realize that things would be better with a full page illustration in this manual. Well, this can be a little tricky because how you add the new page will be different depending on what type of document you started with. This particular document was done in word processing layout, so it's going to be the most difficult. Let's start with the hardest one and then the others will be very easy by comparison. Now the reason this is difficult in word processing mode is because pages allows you to do things in sections. And no, we haven't talked about those yet, so no need to rewind and look for it. Let me explain. Watch as I create another new document here, just like this, but we're going to do a blank layout. Create that, get it open, and then let's kind of move things around so we can see everything. We'll expand our window here. And I want to make sure you can see all of this. Now, we'll get the thumbnails open. And let's just add one page here. Now you can do that by clicking Add Page, just like I did in the toolbar here. Very simple. Now I'm going to click over the thumbnails on page two. And notice that even page one is highlighted in the background. Why is that? Because word processing mode, your document is grouped into sections. Now this does make things easier if you need to move whole sections of your document, but it can prove to be difficult when you need to just add one page or even move a page. So let me create a new section here and we'll add a couple of blank pages. You see, if we click insert and then we click section, now we created a new section and we can even add another page in this as well simply by clicking insert and you get the idea from there. So you can do this while you're in the document body or with the thumbnail selected. And see, we've got the new section here. We need to add a new page here. So we have to click into the document body to do that. Click add page and then pages one and two are a section and pages three and four are a section. And so you can rearrange those sections by dragging them around as you need to. Any of the copy, paste, delete, duplicate functions, all of those are available, but in word processing mode, they apply to the whole section, not just one page. For instance, right click and cut, and that whole section will disappear. But then we can paste it back by right clicking here and paste but we get a whole new section there. See, all of that applies to the whole section. So how do we just add one page? Well, let's go back over to our technical manual. Now, adding a page is as simple as clicking Add Page. We'll go to the end here, get into the text, and we'll click Add Page. And now I just added a page here in the middle of our document based on where we were. Place your cursor where you want it, click it. Obviously, one at the end would be typical, but your word processing layout will automatically do all of these things for you. And you can add your illustration right here in the middle of the manual and just leave the blank page there for now. We're going to add the illustration in just a little while. Now, here's where the difficulty can come in, but I'm going to show you a pro tip that will make this easier for you. And it's not found in the official Apple Pages manual. You see, if you need to move or delete that page, it's in this section and it's not going to go. See, all of the pages here are grouped as a section. Here's your pro tip. Select the page in the thumbnails. And now in the format pane, click on document and then select the section tab. Now see the roll down here that says create a new section. Click on that and select starting with this page. Now look, you've got a section here that has just the blank page and the page after it. But now let's do that one more time, but this time we'll select the page right after, create a new section, starting with this page, and there you are. Now that page is on its own. You can delete it if you need to, you can move it around above another section, whatever you need to do, that is available for you to do. We're going to drag this to the end there. See how that works? That's your pro tip for the sections. Uh, you just choose the place you need to put it and place it in there. If you need to create a section or split it up and, and drag a page or a section in there, you just click the roll down and starting with this page. And now you can insert your rogue page right there. Now, page layout style documents are much easier. Let's open one and take a look. Let's open the newsletter document in our demo folder. 
And see, we've got a cool little newsletter here. And if you'll notice our tabs, they don't highlight anything else as we move around. We've got three pages in this newsletter, so let's, let's add a fourth one. Just click there, add a page, it appears at the end. Let's say that we want to drag it in after page two, and suddenly we've got it there. Page three is appears. If you need to move it, you drag the thumbnail where you want it to go. If you need to delete it, right click, delete, there you go. It's really easy in this mode. Now, we're about the halfway point through this section. Take a few minutes and try some of these things on your own, and I'll be right here until you come back. And we're back. Okay, let's look at a few parts that may be necessary when you're putting a document together. Now, all of these are available no matter which of the two layout options you choose, but they may not be necessary for your particular document, and sometimes they just work a little differently if you use word processing or page layout. Now, these are pretty universal in how they work in many respects, but first, let's just do some headers and footers. And then this is pretty easy in word processing mode because they're pretty much already there unless you removed them. They're just invisible until you add something. Let's jump back over to our technical manual and notice how you don't see the headers and footers unless you move your mouse over them and there they are. They begin to appear. It's like magic. And now if you don't see them, go to the format pane and make sure you have your document selected. Document a tab here and then make sure header and footer are checked if you're having trouble seeing those. Now that works the same way in a page layout document as well. And of course you can add all kinds of things, your document title, page numbers, the date, and those things are not just restricted to the header or footer, but they won't repeat on each page if you don't use them in a header or footer. By the way, if you want to hide the header and footer in the first page of a section, you have that option over here in the section tab of our document format pane, and you can also make them left and right pages are different. And that option will not show up unless you're doing facing pages. So what about a table of contents? Well, setting that up is actually really easy, and in a word processing document, well, even in a page layout document, it will auto-update that table of contents as you add sections and headers. It's based on paragraph styles, which we're going to talk about very soon. Let's use our technical manual for this demonstration. Let's put our cursor where we want to insert our table of contents. Now, in this case, let's add ourselves a blank page right underneath this title and create ourselves a title page. Now, on page two, there's our cursor. Let's go to insert and we'll select table of contents and we'll tell it for the whole document. Now it's generating a table of contents for us as we speak, and there we are. Now, obviously that's in fake Greek, but now if you want to customize this, then go to format and then on select your table of contents, and you can tell it to do the entire document, and you can even have it customize the styles. See, it will take any of the paragraph styles that you want to add in and add those to your table of contents. It will also help change the way things are indented. By the way, you can insert a table of contents for an entire document, just a section, depending on what you need. And you can even put it at the end of the document, like for a newsletter in a page layout document. Okay, another part you can add are footnotes and end notes. To insert a note, you just click the text where you need to add the note and click in the toolbar and insert an end note. So let's add a note here. We're going to click insert and we're going to add a footnote here. Now, see how it gave us the little one symbol and it gives us a place to add our text that we need to text to test our document right here as our footnote. See how the mouse cursor jumps down to the bottom and you're able to insert your footnote text right there. Now, if you want to change this to an end note, select a note that you've already done like this and click on footnotes and we're going to change that to a document end note. Now it's going to move your note all the way to the end of the document and add another page for that. See, very easy to do, or you can do that on the section if you have those. By the way, if you have the same control over the look of the text in these footnotes and endnotes that you do in the rest of the document, and you can even change the symbol that it uses in the format pane as you select the footnotes. Notice the format, you can make it any of these symbols, and 
Very simple. Now, if you really want to go in depth because you're writing a research paper or maybe a dissertation, Pages works with EndNote, which is a great program for managing bibliographies and citations. If you need that, be sure to get the EndNote plugin for Pages, and they'll have some great tutorials on that. But we're not going to get that in depth on this today because our focus is the program Pages itself. Now, you can also add bookmarks and links to your document by simply clicking where you want to bookmark and clicking insert and bookmark. Let's do that right here. We're going to jump to this section and we will create a bookmark right here on our second paragraph. We'll select that and then insert bookmark right there. Now, see how it gives us a little bit of highlighted text? And now these bookmarks will be available to anyone editing the document, but they'll also be available to anyone that gets the PDF version. So make sure those are cleaned up if you don't want your average user to see those bookmarks. Now, one of the things that your table of contents already does is create links to the pages in your document. But let's say you're creating a PDF and you want to link backwards. Well, that's where a bookmark can work for you. So we've got that heading selected and we created a bookmark. Now that shading has disappeared, so we don't really know that it's there again. But let's take a word here, like this last word in our third paragraph. We'll select that word and then let's right click and add a link. And notice bookmark is available here. And we can link to which bookmark? This one right here, see it matches the text. We can even go to the bookmark and it'll show us there. And now you have something that will jump you back to the bookmark. Very easy. That link creation allows you to link to web pages and send emails as well. Just like in any other document, it's almost as if they were planning for the future when we all get PDF documents instead of postal mail. Go figure. <laughs> now that was a lot in that section. So take a few minutes and try this yourself and I will wait for you right here. All right, you made it back. Now, for a few less used items, but there's still lots of fun, and you might want to use these if you're writing a book, of course, if you need to change the background on a page, it's really easy to do like this. Just make sure that you have a page selected that you want to do that with. We'll just use our page three here. And let's go over to document and then section. And notice you have a background here. Let's roll that down and we're going to change the background. Let's use a gradient a color, even an image. Let's use an advanced gradient fill. That'll be interesting. And notice it changed this, the whole section to match that. Maybe you have an important section that needs a yellow background, and so we'll change that to a yellow gradient instead. Let's go over and change our color. There we go. Now that's going to grab everyone's attention, isn't it? Now, since we used our word processing document, like I said, it's going to do the whole section. If you use a page layout document, it will only do the page background on the one page you select. So now you know. Now let's clear that out because it really can be distracting as we work on that. Now, let's go add a border around a page. This could be a solid or even a dotted line around your page. Now for this, first you have to add a square shape to the page and then change the settings on the shape so it behaves like a border. So let's do that. In our toolbar, we're going to add a shape and let's make the rounded rectangle our shape. Now notice how that it drops it into the middle of everything. Now we're going to drag this around our document, but if we do that, it's going to move all of our text around. So let's format that. We'll go to Arrange, and we're going to tell this to stay on the page, and we're going to tell it to not wrap the text around it. There we go. Now, let's make sure that this goes all the way around our document. We'll move it to corner it at half an inch and a half an inch. There we go. That looks great. Now we're going to drag this all the way down like that. And see our rules there get us centered on there. Now, that's covering up the whole thing. Unless you're writing redacted congressional documents, that's really not going to do. So let's remove the color like this. We'll go to Style, and we'll go to Fill, and we will take the fill away. There we go. Much better. Now you can see our text again. Let's go to the Border section. And we're going to use a solid line here. 
Great. Now make that a little narrower. Good. And let's reduce the opacity of that just a little bit. I think that we want to make sure that it's not showing up quite everywhere there. We'll just drop that down to about 50%. Looks great. Okay, that just draws attention to the center. Now we're going to click the Arrange tab and we're going to click Lock. Now that is going to stay on that page but it won't be on every page of the document. To make that happen, we're going to need to make it a background object, which is a perfect lead in for the next section. Okay, here's the term for you. It's called section layout object. Now that's what a watermark, a logo, or anything else that you need to be in the same place in the background of every page is called. Now you know the term, let's explore it. First, Let's do our border. Now we've already formatted it to fit how we want, but let's make it show up on every page in this section. So we've got our border selected, but we can't do anything with it because we locked it. Let's go back and unlock that. And now we're going to click Arrange, Section Layouts, Move Object to Section Layout. And magically it appears on every page in this section. But what happened to page 7? Well. That's a different section, so we're not going to see it on that section there. Now, watermarks kind of work the same way. Why don't we take our big company logo that's in our demo folder and bring that in, drag it into our document. Wow, that moved everything around a lot. So let's play with our image. We'll go to Arrange. We're going to make it stay on the page, but we're also going to tell the text to not go around it. It's just going to go behind it for now. So let's take that logo and let's shrink it down a good bit. I think I'd like to see that a little smaller and we'll put it down in this corner here. That's better. Now, same thing. We're going to take that, click Arrange and Section Layouts, Move Object to Section Layout. And there we go. But wait, this logo needs to be more like a watermark. But you can't select it now, can you? Uh, yes, you can. Make sure you go up to Arrange, and on Section Layouts, make sure Make Layout Object Selectable is checked. Now you can select it. And let's go adjust the opacity on this and take it down to about 35% or so. That's much better. Great. You can even delete it if you needed to. Uh, by the way, pro tip, be sure to go back and change that setting so that you don't accidentally click and move it somewhere later. See, now it's not selectable. Now that's a lot to take in in that section, so go ahead and try this yourself, and I'll wait right here until you're done. Okay, we've been skirting around this a bit, but page templates are a really big deal. As a matter of fact, everything goes back to page templates. In a page layout document, you know, our blank slate that we started with, every page is linked to a page template. Now, as we've seen already, when we go to open a document, there are many templates to choose from, and these are all great to base a new document off of, but I'll bet most of us have particular colors, fonts, even logos that we have to work with. So let's focus on creating a custom template for us to use. So one thing you need to know, you can't create a custom template based on a word processing document. Now I know that seems like a no brainer, but at the time of this recording with the most updated version of pages, you can only create a custom page layout template. Now, I like the way this technical manual is looking, and I know that we're going to have to do tech manuals for several areas of our imaginary corporation, so let's create a template that we'll use for all of our tech manuals. Here's how to do that. Now, to save some time in our Learn It session, I took the liberty of creating a technical manual that is already set up as a page layout. So now, I know you've been curious about it, go ahead and open Technical Manual 2. It's in my recent documents here. It'll be in your demo folder. And there we go, it looks a lot like that original one. But this is a page layout document. Now, to create our template, we're just going to select a page in the thumbnails over here on the left. Let's pick page 3, since it's got our watermark on the bottom, it's got our border, it's got a page number in our footer down here. So, we've got heading and body text, all the things that we need, and it has all the styles that we need in our format here. When we select text, we can see what all is available. 
title, subtitles, all of these things. Okay, so in order to create our page template, we're going to click on the file menu up top. We're going to select format and then all the way down to advanced, create page template from this page. Once you click that, voila, it opens a page template editing window. You see how it has the blank template over here on your left? It also has blank copy, which is the one that we want to use. We're going to right click or control click on blank copy. And we're going to click rename. And let's change this to tech manual. There we go. That's our new template. When you click done at the bottom, the template is ready to use and will show up in your new templates. Now, why don't you take a minute and create a template on your own? And when you come back, we'll move into working with text. Hey, I'm so glad you're back. All right, let's do some basics with text. Now, we're going to fly through this section, so buckle up and hold on. If you've never used a word processing program, pay close attention. If you're familiar with Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, then you probably already know how to select text. You can double click on a word like that, or you can triple click and select a paragraph like that. Oh, what was that? Did you see me select all the text in the document like that? That's a keyboard shortcut. We're going to cover those at the very end, but I'll give you this one now. Command A is select all, and it selects all of the text and all of the selectable objects for that matter in your document. Oh, and place your cursor at a new insertion point. Just move your mouse, put it where you want it. Easy peasy. Now, adding text is as simple as placing the cursor where you need it and typing something new. Or if you need to replace a word or even a whole paragraph, you can do it like this. We'll select the paragraph and we'll begin typing over it. Now, I don't like the way that looks, so we're going to back up with my keyboard shortcut of Command Z and put that paragraph back. Now, copying and pasting text works like it does anywhere else. We'll keep that section selected and we will right click and get copy or you can control click that or you can hit command C for copy and then select where you want it to go. Let's go to the end of our document and add that paragraph and we'll paste it right there. See, super easy, right? Now, just in case you were wondering, this works whether it's word processing or page layout document. So there you go. Super easy with some text. Now, this is where your Mac really shines. You can use speech recognition to edit your document. Now, Apple has been in the forefront of speech recognition for a long time, and this will make your editing much faster. I mean, come on, who can't say, hey, and if I say her name, she'll start responding on all my Apple devices across the board here. Anyway, to dictate into your document, you'll need to select the place you want to start. And then from the file menu, click edit and then start dictation. Let's try it. Now it's going to ask us if we want to enable these things. If you've never done this. It's going to give you these pop-up boxes here, just like that. And now it's going to see if we can put all of this text into our document, just like that. See how easy that was? It's super simple, especially if you're a slow typer. Accents and special characters are some other things that we can do here. It's as simple as holding down the key that you need an accent on. For instance, I have a friend from Cuba whose name uses the tilde over the N. So just hold down the N key like this, and it's going to give us some options, one or two, to put that in there. Correct. Cool, huh? A does this. O does this. I, any others that might have any of these things. By the way, just for those who want to know, those are called diacritical marks. So now you know. You can also place math symbols, Latin characters, and even emojis, although I don't necessarily recommend that last one in a business document. Just select where you need it to go and then go to edit. Go down to emoji and symbols, and this cool little character viewer pops up. 
And of course, you can scroll over to the emojis and put yourself a set of cool glasses down there. But uh, your most likely culprits are going to be all the way on the end over here. Symbols like these, like a registered trademark. Enters that in. There you go. Just click on it and it adds it. Okay, many of us taking this training are going to be working exclusively in English, but what if you need to enter text in another language? Now, we're not going to spend a ton of time on this because we could spend the entire remainder of our time together with multiple language keyboard layouts and reformatting documents for them. Your Mac has a lot of flexibility when it comes to that. Right now, let's just show you how you can create a document in a different language. Now, my daughter is learning Korean, so let's use that for our example here. You'll need to create a new document, but do it in a special way. Hold down the Option key, and then click File, and New, and now you have a new option on your template chooser. You can choose English. Let's drag that up so you can see all of the available languages. But then we can also select any of the languages here that Mac supports. In our case, we're going to create a new document in Korean, and so it begins with Korean characters. Now, most recently we've used one of these. So let's do that one and we'll create it. And there we are, a brand new report document, all formatted for the Korean language. Really nice, huh? Okay, back to our English technical manual. A good practice to have on anything like this is to put the most recent date and time so you know when it was last edited. Now let's do that down in the footer of our document here. We'll just click in the middle section here. Now we already know how to select text in the headers and footers. We'll click down in the center and then we're going to go to the file menu and click insert. And then let's go down to date and time. Simple. Puts it right there. Now, this is a technical manual, so you may need to add a mathematical equation or two in there. Now, there's an insert for that as well. Just click Insert and Equation, and because I happen to know the latex formula, and yes, that is mathematical documentation, latex, we can enter this just like that. Let's enter Insert, and we'll go down to Equation. And see, it asks if you want to use latex or MathML. We'll just know that we can enter E equals MC, and then we'll use the caret symbol over the 6 and the number 2, and that gives us E equals MC squared, entered right into our document. Mathematical symbols, and we've got Einstein's math and energy calculation right here in our text. Okay, class, recess of a sort. Go ahead and play with these functions, and I'll wait right here until you get back. Okay, folks, back to work. Changing the font is done from the format pane over here on the right side of your screen. Now you can resize your font, you can make it bold, italic, underline, strike through, all of these are available. Now one thing you may not realize is this, any change you make will only be changed on what you select. Now what do I mean by that? Well, if you select one line of text like this and make it italics like this, it's not going to change anything after that. See these remain the same. But what if we don't have a line of text selected? Go down a few returns and let's hit bold. Now everything will be bold, just like that. And it will continue. No matter what we type in there, that will continue to be bold. Now, if you need to make a change universally over the whole document, you need to set some default fonts. So a little wordplay for you. If I say we're going to set up paragraph styles, you're probably not thinking about fonts, but that's exactly what this does. Paragraph styles are what you see over here in the format pane where it says body, title, subtitle, heading, all of these things. Those are paragraph styles. So let's switch over to our word processing document, Technical Manual 1, and play around with some of those. Now, these are going to create a consistent look across your whole document, and if you change one, it'll reflect those changes across the whole document as well if you need to change them. So let's play with this. Now, our technical manual looks really good, but I think a more classic book format would look even better. So let's do a book style font that'll help us out. Let's select all of this paragraph right here, and let's change to Baskerville. Now, that looks good, and notice that 
we have a button that appears up here to update. If we click update, now all of our paragraphs are changed to that same font. It's all the way across the document. Now, what about our headers? Well, they don't look quite right either. Let's select one of those and go with the same font. It's already bold. Let's update our headings. And wow, looks even better. There's that update button again that we just clicked. Now, side note, you're going to want to do this before you create a template if you want your default fonts to be saved with the template. So that's another pro tip for you there. And notice that it didn't change anything up here because these are different. The title and subtitle are different fonts. Same thing for our table of contents. Okay, another side note, you probably noticed you can change text color over here in the format pane as well. See the roll down box there with the different colors. So color changes can be applied to a default font like this. Let's select our we have bold text line and let's change it to heading red just for the fun of it. Now, that's cool, but let's change the color. Uh, let's make it this second blue one here. Well, that doesn't match that name anymore, but we can update that and we can roll down and look at the arrow next to heading red. We'll rename our style to heading blue. And there we go, that kind of matches. Now, you can add shadows and outlines to text as well. That's going to be found in this little cog wheel over here underneath the where you change the font size and next to where the strike through button is. So first, let's add a outline to this one. There we go. That's not bad. And that looks kind of like a neon sign, actually. Let's click shadow. Oh, now it's really going to be great. Let's change that offset down to two points and change our angle a little bit. All right. Now we've got me singing John Mayer, neon. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay, that same cogwheel also works for changing capitalization. Let's select the next paragraph here and play with that. Okay, we've got our text. Triple click to select the paragraph. Now select the advanced wheel over here. And let's go to capitalization. Now, let's look at the different ones. Start case means every word has a capital letter at the beginning of it, no matter what. Now, because this is lorem ipsum text, it's a little hard to see if you do title case, but title case will give it a capital letter at the beginning of each word, unless it's the word and, the, or, or, one of the participles like that. Then there's small caps, which is kind of my favorite, where everything is capitalized, but the beginning capital letter is just slightly taller than the rest. That looks good. So a little tall and short, but you get the idea. Now, you know you can copy and paste text, but did you know that you can copy and paste a style? Yes, you can. And here's how to do it. Select the paragraph we just used that on, which we've already got selected. Now we're going to go up here and click Format, and then Copy Style. Easy, right? Well, now let's select another paragraph, and we'll paste that style just like that it matches. There you go. Quick and easy. Okay, let's do some custom character and punctuation before we move on. This is the technical manual, so we may need to customize a measurement. For instance, if you type one half, we'll go down here and type one slash two. It turns out like that. For this, you'll have to edit your preferences. So let's go into the depths of the program. Click the word pages on the upper left hand corner of your screen, then preferences. And then we're going to go to the last tab. You have General, Rulers, and Auto Correction. Let's go down to Automatically Format Fractions. There you go. Now let's go back and type in one half into our document. And it gives us the option to select to make it a fraction. Now, there are character styles already created for you here. You can create your own character style just like this. Let's call this one bookmark, and we'll use some of the things we already learned. Let's actually type the word bookmark into our document. Now, let's change that to small caps, just like we've done before. Now... We're going to select our roll down here in the paragraph styles 
and we're going to click the plus sign right up here at the top. And we'll call this one bookmark. And now you just created a paragraph style or a character style right here in your document. One more thing in this part, drop caps are also a kind of a good effect to use to help direct the reader's eye, especially when you're publishing a book. To apply a drop cap, you just select a paragraph like this one. And then you select the drop cap box right here. And you have several options available that change out how your drop caps are going to look. It's really good for leading the eye and it gives a nice effect when you're working with a book. Okay, highlighting text requires a few more clicks or using a keyboard shortcut. Yes, I promise we will talk about those at the end. Anyway, select your text and then click on insert. Let's use this one right here. We'll click on insert and go down to highlight. Seems simple, right? Now, by the way, a highlight assumes that you're putting a note in there. So if you need to do that, just mouse over it and it's going to pop up with the opportunity for you to put a comment in here. Now you have a lot of control when it comes to your punctuation, but let me show you some things that the program does automatically for you. First, pages will move whole words to the next line instead of hyphenating. If you want it to hyphenate for you instead, you'll need to select document in our format pane over here. And then you'll need to turn on or off hyphenation depending on what you need. In this case, it goes for the entire document. Now, you can remove the hyphens from particular paragraphs as well. See how this one has a hyphen in the top line? Let's select the paragraph, and then on the Format pane, go to Format, and then More, and then click on Remove Paragraph Hyphenation, and it takes it back to the way it was. Pages will also auto-convert double hyphens into a dash, just like this. See, so it converts that to a dash easy. Your default quotation mark styles, you can select those like this. We'll have to go back into the preferences pane for that. So pages, preferences, and you may have seen this already using smart quotes and dashes. You can tell it to use double quotes in different ways, depending on what you particularly need in your document. Same thing with single quotes. Okay, I'm going to click out of that and let you do some of this on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, and I will see you back when you're done. Okay, let's actually work with some paragraphs now. Here, select a paragraph like this. Let's get this first one. Now, you can change the spacing over here on the right. Before and after paragraph spacing can be updated. You can change the number of lines between and see how it updates. All the format and style that you need to do on there. All of these things are available at your fingertips on the right side, depending on what you need. Now, if you need to update the paragraph margins, that's easy as well. Now, this only applies to the paragraph you have selected. So in this case, we'll just keep this paragraph selected and you need to see the rulers. So let's click on view and show ruler. And there we go. Here are our two paragraph sides, which we can cinch this one up a little bit, make it look a little different than the others, just like that. Now, in many documents, especially a technical manual like this, you're going to have a list of some kind. Let's take a look at that. I was about to say how easy that is, but I think you're probably getting the idea by now. So we have a portion of text selected, and let's tell it to be an image bullet list. We'll go over here to bullets and list on the right side and image bullets. Now, because we don't have any return lines in there, we're going to need to add some and get our bullets. But I don't think I like that bullet image. Let's change that to something else. Current image. Oh, that's much nicer. And let's go continue. Every time we hit a line, new return line, we get a new bullet. See how easy that is? Now, if you're using Harvard numbering, if you're taking notes and you need to do that, you can select the section that you're in and even update that as well. Just like this. We'll go to image and change it to Harvard numbering. And notice that it also allows you to hit tab and it auto updates your numbering setup as well. Very easy to do. 
Okay, while our ruler is open, you can also set tab stops. It's really easy to do. You can click right here on the ruler and it will set it. You can even right click and tell it which tab it needs to be in the paragraph. Notice how it's looking to update the body paragraph style as we do that as well. That'll make that tab stop universal throughout our document when you click update just like that. Now aligning and justifying text is also found on the right side as we look at formatting our text. You can left align like we have done already. You can right align, you can center it, and you can even fully justify it, and it's a smart justify, by the way, so it looks good. Now let's play with how the pages lay out with our text. First, line breaks are a very simple matter. If you need to force a line to go down one, you just click here and click insert a line break. It works very much like a hitting return on your keyboard. Now you can also insert a page break in the same way. Simply click insert, page break, and now you've got a brand new page starting there. Now, we need to take care of our widows and orphans. What? What are you talking about? Well, you heard me right. Always remember to care for the widows and orphans, even in your documents. In a document, a widow is the first line of a paragraph appearing at the bottom of a page, and an orphan is the last line of a paragraph appearing at the top of a page. Now, let's find a paragraph here that has some lines like this one that has that issue, and make sure that our prevent widow and orphan lines box is checked just like this. Prevent widow and orphan lines, and there we go. That's not a last line, it's several lines in. Taking care of the widows and orphans every time right here in pages on your Mac. Now, what if we need to make a section into columns? Let's take this section right here, and it's very smart about it. Use that paragraph right here, and in the layout section of the document pane, we can change that into two columns. As easy as that. Now, using something else we've learned, this doesn't look very eye-leading and could be a little confusing, so let's put a line break right in here. And that'll drop it down for us. All right, we need to jump back to a page layout document for this next part. Let's switch over to our newsletter. We haven't been back there in a while. Now, do you see the little dots here in the top of our text boxes? Those allow you to link text boxes together to make text flow from one box to another. If you click on it, you see you've got a number on this one, but notice at the bottom of this box we have a plus sign. There's extra text there that is not showing up on the next page. So how can we fix that? Well, we'll add another text box just like this right up here at the top. Add a text box. And let's get it formatted to go along with the boxes that we have already. And now, click the dot here in the top of the box, and that links it up. See how it auto-filled the text that was remaining? Just magically appeared. That's because the first two boxes, it just wouldn't fit, so we needed to flow to the next one. Okay, one last thing in this section on text. You can add a border around a paragraph just like this. Let's take this one. You can select a paragraph, and then over here in the Layout tab under Format, under Borders and Rules, you can change the way it goes. See, now there's a border at the bottom. Let's make the border go all the way around this, and then just for good measure, let's give it a little bit of a highlight. Now, that's going to stand out in your document. Give it a background for good measure, and that highlights that section for you. Okay, now there's a lot to catch, but I know you can do it. If you need to rewind at any time, I won't be offended. <laughs> Heck, I won't even notice. Go ahead and do this section on your own, and I'll be here when you get back. You're back. Awesome. You should be feeling very confident in your pages skills by now. All right, let's play with some graphics. Adding graphics to your document can really dress things up and lead the eye very well. Now, what I show you here with an image can also apply to the different shapes that there are. These are so interchangeable. Now, we have an image that we can bring into our technical manual, so let's do that. Let's switch back over to technical manual one, and I've taken the liberty of taking us to just a single page view so we can add it in. We'll get an insertion point with our cursor right here, and then insert media 
and choose. Now, notice how advanced Pages is. It's giving us the opportunity to take a photo, scan documents, or even add a sketch with our phone or our iPad. And now you also know that I'm a Star Wars fan. So there we go. But for right now, we're just going to click Choose, and we're going to select our overhead projector JPEG image and insert. There we go. Yeah, like I said, we're going old school. Going to have some fun with this. Now, there's not much text to work with on this, but it will flow around. So let's go down and see how the text flows when we add an object. Let's go down to this first paragraph here and select in the middle of it. And let's add a shape in there just to see how the text flows. Let's select a circle. Now notice how tight everything is as we move that around. It just stays along with it and we can use this for multiple things, but you can also have it go above and below. You can have it go in line with the text. You can even have it not fit like we've done before when we created the border around everything. But for right now, we'll just go with around, but we're going to get this one out of the way and let's go down to the top of our page. Let's go up to the top of our page and insert another shape and see what we can do there. Now I know you saw arrows as part of the shapes available, but what about a line with an arrow? Yep, you can insert that too, and you can do it from here under shapes. There are the lines up here, but you can also do this from the insert menu as well. Down to line, and you have a line with arrowhead, with two, a straight connection line, or you can even draw it with your pen. Let's put a call out on our image here. Let's put a circle that we can write some text into and move that down here. And now let's place an arrow right here. But to make sure that stays where it goes, we're going to make that stay on the page. Let's do the same with our circle. Now we can adjust the arrow to meet the top of our circle. And we'll have the arrow go to our projector. There we go. Now we've created a call out. You can insert it just like that. And I know you've probably laughed at my example of the overhead projector, but let's dress this up a little bit. By the way, I forgot to mention about the shapes. You can put text in these as well, just like this. See how easy that was? Now we've updated our shape and we've made our manual even more current. Okay, this part only works with the iPad or iPhone version of Pages, but hey, if it gets your boss to buy you an iPad, then this is well worth showing them this portion of the training too, right? Be sure to bookmark it and bring them along. Okay, now you're going to have to open your document in Pages for iPhone or iPad and create a drawing. Now for this, I'm going to change this over to my iPad, so let's go over there. Okay, here we are on my iPad, and this is Pages for iPad that you see. Now, let's take our technical manual and add a drawing like this. Now, that seems pretty simple, right? But now, as easy as that was, we can reopen this on the app on the Mac and do something really cool. Okay, check this out. We'll click on the drawing that we made on the iPad right here. And now you see the drawing tab that's open in our format pane. Check the box right here that says animate drawing. Now for a print document, it doesn't mean as much, but for eBooks and PDFs, you can really draw some attention to this. Let's play and see what it does. Very cool, huh? By the way, you can add a description to the drawing as well. Titles and captions, even audible descriptions that someone with vision impairment can be able to hear, so it will describe it to them. You can also right-click and share this video as an image or as a movie, which gives us a perfect segue into the next part, adding video and audio. Now this is just as simple as placing any other media like images, but you do have some different controls. And again, this is only going to be for documents like ebooks or PDF. 
Now to add these in, you're most likely going to want to drag it in from the finder or to add by clicking the media button up here and then clicking choose. Uh, clicking the movies button up here will give you access to movies that you have in your photos app. So if you're like me and you use that for personal photos from your iPhone or your iPad, unless you're going to add kids unwrapping their Christmas presents or maybe little Johnny's piano recital, that's probably not what you're looking for. Now, I just happen to have a file in our demo folder, so let's go to the end of our document and let's insert our video that we have by clicking Choose and let's add a little bit of wow factor. Wow! And there you go. So you can click the play button to play the movie. Now there's one more thing you can do here that is very useful. You can also add an online video. Let's put a little space in here. Now this only works for YouTube or Vimeo videos, but let me show you how this can be a powerful tool as well. Just as before, click on media, and then we're going to click on web video. Now, I just happen to have a URL copied here to add. And look, we've got a link to Learn It Training right here in our document. Now, if you feel like your document would be better with some audio, you can also add that in. Now, the music link up here is going to give you access to songs that you have downloaded and purchased through Apple Music. The record audio link will obviously allow you to record audio through your Mac. Now, I personally love the record audio feature as an opportunity for an author to give proper pronunciation of a character name, but again, that's only going to work in an ebook or PDF format. And we can't do it here because I'm recording this audio as you're watching. Now, you can have your Mac and pages convert your video and images to be more compatible like this. Let's go back to Preferences by clicking the word Pages and then Preferences. Now here on the General tab, near the middle of the bottom section here, you're going to see a couple of checkboxes that will change what your videos in your document are compatible with. By using all of them, you can make them converted so they'll play on all devices and make them the most compatible. Okay, let's click out of that. Now, you go add some shapes, add some media, put a video in there, and I'll be waiting here for you when you get back, but you might better pause the video first. Now, we've already covered moving an object around in your document, but what about some other capabilities? Well, Pages has many options for your objects in your document. Let's explore a couple of things, some things we've actually seen before like transparency. Let's explore that just a little bit. You see opacity you have here on the lower right hand corner when you have format and style selected and your circle. You can turn that down all the way to nothing or bring it up part of the way to see what you like. Now you can also change the color of that as well. You have some quick options up here but you can also choose any color you like. Let's make this yellow to match our brightness. Let's see if we can get a better yellow there that matches it a little better. Now, the line, let's change that as well. Now, notice the line, however, is not a fill. We're going to have to move our drawing over just a little to grab it, but the line is not a fill, it's a stroke. So we're going to have to change our color like this on the line. Now we can move our drawing back over and everything works well together. Now all that matches. Now, while we're editing the lines, why not add a border? You can do that around the circle and add a border to that, which is pretty simple. We can make a black line around our circle. But what if you want to do something a little extra? What if we dress up the picture here at the top by selecting our projector? And let's put a frame around that. So where it says no border, let's change that to picture frame. And then let's go old school and choose a frame style like, yeah, there we go. Have the little corner tabs on there. Excellent. Now, if you need to add a caption or a title to your photo, just check the boxes for those as well. And it will give you the option for a title and a caption. We don't need those on this particular photo, but you get the idea. Now, what if we dress it up a little bit by adding a shadow or a reflection? 
Reflection gives you a little bit there, but that's not going to work very well on this one. Let's add a drop shadow. Now that makes that picture stand out very nicely. Now, if you're putting a lot of objects like photos and shapes into your document and you want them to be the same style, you can use object styles. Now, we've already alluded to this with the selections that you can make right up here on the upper right hand corner. Let's select our circle and you can see these up here, but let's create one based on our yellow circle just to show how this is done to create a custom one. So let's add a reflection to this just for the fun of it. And now let's scroll over one section and click the plus sign here. And there you go. Now you can apply that style to anything else in your document, any other shape in your document that is. Let's go add a shape down here at the end just for the fun of it, just to see how this goes. So we'll add a shape and let's make it a rounded rectangle. We'll drag it down here, but now let's apply our custom style. And there you go. Looks just like the circle at the top. That way this is consistent all the way through your document. By the way, all of those custom styles are available for photos and videos as well. Now, you go ahead and take a few minutes and add some things to your demo document, and I'll be here when you get back. Okay, let's work with some tables and charts for a bit. Now, tables work just like they do in a spreadsheet. You can edit cells, add formulas, sort data, all of that kind of stuff. Charts have a lot of functionality in your pages document as well. So let's add a table and a chart to one of our documents and work with it for a bit, just for fun. Why don't we add those to our newsletter? Let's bring that up to the front and we'll go to the last page of our newsletter here. Now notice we have a text box, but remember this is a layout document. So we've got open space here. Now jumping down to the bottom, you're going to add the table. When you click the button to add a table, it gives you a lot of choices on different styles that you can use. Even some that are pretty plain. I think I like this one with the light blue border on the side. Great. Now what do we do? Well, first let's move that table to the top of our area here and notice how the center guide helps keep us lined up, right? Awesome. Okay. Now just for fun, let's make sure that we have title and caption on this. That's better. Okay. Now let's edit these and give it a name. We'll make this sales Q2. 2022 and because this is our Acme newsletter, we'll make sure that these sales don't include coyotes. All right, there we go. Since he's the one that buys most of our stuff anyway. Okay. So let's add and organize some data in here. And I'm going to add some info that I have in a note. And just because we can cause cells to format just like in a spreadsheet and we'll change these cells to a date format just to make sure that we're getting what we want. And we'll make sure that it shows it as a month and a year. Great. There we go. All right. So now we're going to use Q2. So let's enter some data and I'll come right back after we get the data in our cell. Okay. So we've got our data in, but uh oh, it looks like I've got the months in the wrong order. Well, that's okay because again, this table works just like any spreadsheet. Let's select our data points here and we'll right click and we're going to sort them ascending by column A. There we go. Now the months are in the correct order. Now we need to total these columns, of course. So just like I said, you can enter formulas in these tables, just like this, hit the equal sign and it's ready for a formula. But wait, pages even knows that if you select all of these, it automatically assumes you're going to get a sum in your column. And just like with any other spreadsheet, copy and paste works to be able to get our column totals. There we go. Now let's put a chart under this table right here and just for fun, let's do a 3d pie chart. Yeah, that looks good. There it is. Now we can slide this down. We can move it around and look, you've got control on the angle of the rotation of your 3d pie chart by grabbing the control in the center here. 
Now, let's edit the chart data based on our table above it. When you click Edit Chart Data, a pop-up window comes up, and you can edit all of your data points. We'll do it just like this. I'll edit all these data points and then come back to the video in just a moment. Okay, so we've got our first three data points entered here, but we have some extra information that we need to get rid of to make our chart work for our purposes. So for that, click over here, and we're going to delete this column. Then we'll mouse over and delete the next column. And finally, this one. And now we've got our three data points and it shows our percentages of our sales just like that. Now, we can close out of this box. And if you need to move this around, of course, this will grab all of your points on the guides to get you centered up on your page. But you can also increase the size of this. Let's do that and then recenter. And you also can rotate your chart again by grabbing the center. By the way, while you have this selected, select the wedges tool and you can increase the distance from the center of your amounts or even your wedge positions and split out your 3D pie chart just like that makes it look very eye-catching. Chart styles are available as well. You know, this one, you, we can update it with new colors. We can do new chart styles, all of that kind of stuff. Now, that was a lot to work with with tables and charts. So go ahead, flip back to your demo newsletter, add in a table, add in a chart, enter some data points. And when you come back, we'll use some of the writing tools that are available. All right, you have a ton of options when it comes to writing and editing tools. Checking spelling is just the first. Select a word like this one. Let's go up to the top of our document and look. We've got a word that's misspelled. It's got a red line under it. You can just right click or control click and it gives you a suggestion on how to correctly spell your word. Now, you can also have pages check the whole document for spelling and grammatical errors by clicking Edit and then going down to Spelling and Grammar and check Document Now. Now, with this being a Laura Mipsum fake text document, we're not going to do that in actuality at this time, but you see how that works. Now, right-clicking also gives you the ability to look up words on the spot as well. See here, right-click or Control-click, click Look Up, and it brings it right here in the program so you don't have to open your web browser to look up a word. Now for the big one, find and replace text is a great tool for, well, <laughs> finding and replacing words in your document. What if your company has a name change or update as you're preparing the newsletter? Maybe something as simple as adding .inc to the name is easy with this tool. Under Edit in the File menu, click on Find, and now we can add this in. Let's look for Acme Cartoon Tutorials. And we're going to change that to acme.inc. And we're going to replace this first one that it found. Now, where's another one? Let's take a look. There's another one. And we'll replace it. There you go. See how easy that was? All done. By the way, you can have your Mac automatically replace text for you. Now, this actually takes you into your system settings. So if your company administrator has them locked for any reason, this won't work. But let me show you how this is done. While in Pages, click on Edit up here in the File menu, and then go down to Substitutions. Now let's click Show Substitutions, and I'll show you a little something here. See, you can select Smart Dashes, Smart Links, Text Replacement, all of those things. But for this particular instance, click on Text Preferences. That's going to open up your system settings, and you can add some of your own replacements. Now, one I use quite often is the degree symbol, as you see here, and it can substitute the symbol for the word when I type it in. Let's close out of these boxes, and I'll show you how that works. I'll click right here in a text box and I'll type in the word degrees and it replaces it with a degree symbol for me right there just like that okay let's look around at a few other things dealing with our text and documents you can see word count paragraph count page count and all these other things by clicking view and then show word count let's flip over to our 
word processing document and let's add in the word count view and then show word count and now it's showing us our words but you can change that to view the number of characters the number of paragraphs the number of pages all of those things are available now if you need to add a page count to a document you can simply click insert we'll put it right here and go down to page count and there it is in our highlighted neon text right there. Of course, this is best used in a footer, of course, but you get the idea. Let's insert our page count right here in the footer. And there you go. Now, your document can have annotations that have been added using Pages for iPhone or iPad. Pages calls these smart annotations, and they look a lot like the drawing that we did earlier. You can show or hide those on your Mac by clicking View right over here, and then Show or Hide Smart Annotations, as the case may be. Now, you probably noticed this as we went into the Pages Preferences. You can set the author's name by clicking Pages, Preferences, and then in the General tab, there's your author's name right there. Usually, this if this is a corporate computer, that will be automatically set to something like Mac user. So you can change that so people know who you are. You can also personalize your comment color by clicking View in the File menu. Let's close out of this. We'll click View. And then go down to Comments and Changes. And we'll change the author color. I think I like this gray-blue for my comments from now on. Perfect. Now, let's say you've got a section that you need to update, but you don't have the info right now. But if you're like me, you're going to forget to edit that later. That's when a comment is just the right tool. Just place your cursor where you need to add that comment. Let's put it right up here in our bullet point list. And then we're going to click Comment up here in the top toolbar. need to edit this later and now we have our comment added in and it's showing a dot where it's been added by the way if you have a lot of comments or if you're collaborating with others on your document you can see all of the comments by clicking view and then clicking on show comments pane that will add it to it and every one of these you need to It'll draw a line to it as you select over it there. You'll have the option to print comments as well. But we'll talk about that in just a few moments. Now, if you want to track changes to a document, that is as easy as a checkbox. You can click on Edit up here in the File menu and go down to Track Changes, and it opens up your Track Changes. And see, it's automatically turned on as you go. That gives you control for tracking your document changes and even show you where you can back up to if you make a mistake. All right, now it's your turn to try out all these writing and editing tools. Go ahead and work on it. Rewind the video if you need to, and I'll be right here when you are done. Hey, we're back again now. What good is our document if we can't share it with others? Let's start with the traditional method of printing. I know it smells like toner and old coffee in there, but sometimes you just have to do it. It's as easy as clicking File and Print, or just hit Command-P as it shows here. Now, I personally prefer to have a little more control over my printing, so let's show the details. Now you can choose to print any backgrounds that you have, smart annotations, or even comments that have been made, and it even moves things over if you select Comments. So you've got a pane there for your comments. Uh, if you're sending a physical letter, Pages even gives you the option to print envelopes. You can select an envelope style from the template chooser. Let's click out of that and do one of those. We'll click on New. And let's go down to an envelope style. We'll just do a modern envelope and create a new one. And there you have it. It's ready to print as you enter your information. Now let's go back over to our newsletter. Let's close out of a few view things here so that we can get a little bit cleaner section. And let's go to our newsletter document. Now, sending a document has never been easier than with pages. You have so many options to do this. So let's look at what we can do. Just click share. 
and send a copy. And let's use messages as the way we do this. Now, you have several options here. You can share it as a pages document, a Word document, a PDF, even an EPUB, plain text, or RTF. That's rich text format to those that don't know what RTF means. Now, you can also do much of this from the file menu. You can select any of these types as you export a document. Now, sharing the pages file will be editable, of course, so a PDF would be a document that looks like what you're looking at on your screen without the ability to edit it. An EPUB, obviously, is a digital book format that gives you much the same option as PDF, but you can also include a cover page for your ebook as you get ready there. Now, of course, we all know about Microsoft Word. Notice when we select Word that you have an advanced option so you can make your document more compatible with older versions of Word if necessary. Now, collaboration is a huge bonus for working in pages. You can invite others to join in and help edit and add content to your document. It is a real time saver over emailing a single document back and forth, and you can track the changes in real time. Just click the collaboration icon right over here on the upper right hand side, and you can send your invitations however you like. Now, you can also see your collaboration in real time by clicking show collaboration activity. Now notice ours is grayed out because our collaborators haven't accepted their invitations yet, but it will show up automatically and it will hide their activity when you need to hide that so you can see your document to work on it. Now, publishing to Apple Books is a great idea if you're a budding author. Now without spending too much time on that, there are basics that you need for your book. It needs to be saved to your iCloud account, and you'll need to set up an iTunes Connect account as well. Your book's going to need a table of contents before they'll accept it. And there's a whole lot more, like a whole training class more on publishing to Apple Books. So be sure to take a look around for Learn It to have a training session on that topic very soon. Now, why don't you take a few minutes, warm up that printer, send some stuff out on your email, and I'll be here when you get back. Okay, as I've mentioned before, saving these documents in the cloud is very helpful. As a matter of fact, the things we did with the iPad version and drawing would not have worked if we weren't using iCloud. You also can't collaborate if your document isn't in iCloud. Now, if you're not saving your documents to iCloud Drive, you're really missing out. And it's as simple as making sure that that's where they're going. When I click up here on the document name, you'll see that it shows the folder that it's in. And if we roll that down, you'll see that that's in my iCloud library as well. Be sure that you're saving your documents to iCloud for the greatest possible impact. Now, from that same spot, you can change the folder where your document is saved, like we talked about, but you can also lock a document. Just click the lock button and no one can edit it, not even you. You can also password protect a document. That might be helpful if you need to protect a document that can be found in the file menu. And then go down to set password. And you can even put a password hint in there. Now notice you also have Touch ID available. So if your MacBook has Touch ID like mine, you can use that to unlock a password protected document. Now, our technical manual can potentially get very large as we go. Let's flip back over to that one. and We better reduce that file size by clicking File and then Reduce File Size. You have a few options to click here and that will make it smaller and also help your iCloud storage as well. So, reduce a copy and there we go. We'll save it but we're not going to replace that. Let's rename it just like that. Now, if your document is getting pretty big, say over 500 megs, pages will actually run a little better if you save it as a package file by clicking File and then Advanced and change the file type to a package. Easy as that. Now, if you realize that you need to back up a long way instead of hitting undo or command Z for an hour, just open an earlier version of the document. It's under the file menu as well. Click file 
and then click revert to, and you can even browse all the versions of your document that you've worked with over the course of time. See how it flips back and forth as you go through these and loads those versions up for you. Pretty nifty, right? Very helpful if you need to wipe out something that you need to fix from a ways back. Now, iCloud is the best option for being able to transfer documents, but what if that's not available? Well, I've been in situations where there was no Wi-Fi and I needed to get a document from my MacBook to my iPad. No problem. Just share the document using AirDrop, just like this. Click on Share and send a copy, AirDrop, and then you have your selection of exporting documents just like before and send it to your iPad or your iPhone as you need to. Now, it's your turn. Work with your documents and storage, lock and unlock, transfer some stuff over, and when you come back, we're going to work on some troubleshooting steps, and we're going to wrap up with those keyboard shortcuts, just like I promised. Okay, you're back, and now I'm going to make you the Office Mac Hero. Are you ready? Here are some surefire things to look at when things are going wrong in pages. Of course, first try powering it off and back on again, but if that doesn't work, it will do some things like this. For instance, if you can't add or delete a page, make sure which document type it is. Just select the document button over here on the right and see if document body is checked. If document body is checked, it's word processing layout. Remember, you're going to have trouble deleting a page unless you remove it from a section, just like we talked about earlier. Now, if that box is not checked, for instance, on our technical manual 2, notice document body is not checked here, it, then it's a page layout document. You're going to have to add and delete pages from the thumbnail view over here on the left. Now, if you've got something you can't remove from a document, make sure that the box is not locked, first of all, which this one is not, and make sure, to get more specific, let's see if there's some things that you can't figure out you can't remove. For instance, it could just be some of the invisibles. See the paragraph returns here. Those are not going to print and they're not going to show up on your PDF, but to get them out of the way, you'll need to click View and Hide Invisibles. Now, if you can't find a button or a control from your top bar up here, it is possible that you're no longer in pages. Now, I try very hard to keep my windows full screen when I work on these documents, but if you don't do that, you could have clicked out and see some different controls from another application. Now, if you're sure you're in pages and maybe you're missing something up in the toolbar here, then right click or control click in the toolbar and then go down to customize toolbar. You can very easily reset it by simply doing what it says here, drag the default set into the toolbar. We're going to grab this and drag it right up into our toolbar and now everything's reset and back like it was. Now, if page formatting keeps changing on you, that's our one last thing in troubleshooting. The template that you start with has the defaults for margins, line spacing, text, and so forth. So when you're typing and hit return, the next paragraph should use the same formatting. If you click away and then back and the formatting doesn't stay the same, you can fix that by selecting a properly formatted paragraph like this and then click on format, copy style, and then go to the paragraph that is not correct and paste that style and then your document should be able to continue without any issues just like that. Okay, the best for last, perhaps my favorite part, I am a confessed keyboard shortcut junkie. I am. Many of the menu items that I'm scrolling through even right now show keyboard shortcuts along beside them as you go. And there are way too many for me to cover in this short training time. Let me give you a pro tip. If you're moving to a Mac from a PC environment, then substitute the command key instead of the control key in a Windows environment. For instance, command C is copy, command V is paste, command X is cut, and command Z is undo and so forth. And if you want to see what all is available, you can click help and keyboard shortcuts. 
I literally could teach a two-hour class on all of the available keyboard shortcuts that you have, but we're not going to do it here. Now, what I will do is make sure that you understand the symbols that are used. Here they are. Command looks like this symbol right here. For instance, Command A for Select All. Notice the up arrow is for Shift. There's your option. There's Control. And there's Function. Now, notice how they show up in our edit menu. There's Command X for cut, Command C for copy, Command V for paste, and here you see an option, Shift, Command, V for paste and match style. That's one that's very useful, by the way. So you'll see all these symbols up here when you're ready for keyboard shortcuts. And remember, all of these can be found right over here in the Pages User Guide for Mac when you click Help and Keyboard Shortcuts. Well, folks, that is all for our Pages training today. What did we cover? Well, we did some layouts, opening and closing documents, saving, printing, all of those things. We worked on text boxes and graphics. We formatted our text in our documents. We added charts and tables to a document. Then we published, printed, and shared our document. And we even got some bonus time on keyboard shortcuts. Hey, if you enjoy this training, be sure to let us know and be sure to mention your humble tutor, James Hill, when you do. Thanks for joining us and may your documents always be stunning. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learnit.